If you have ever tried to create a smoke and blender EV, you must have experienced many challenges. I have also spent many such long hours to make my smoke work just the way I want. In this tutorial, we will discuss all the settings of smoke simulation in Blender EV, the possible challenges, and their solutions. So, let us start with a new file. We will use the default cube to simulate our smoke, but you can also use any other object in place of this cube if you want. To add a smoke effect for this object, go to the object menu, then quick effects, and select quick smoke. We can see that Blender added a bounding box here. Later, I will also show you how to add these effects manually. So, this bounding box is called the smoke domain. You can see that a new object is now added, in the outliner panel, as the smoke domain. This is the primary object in a smoke simulation. But, Blender also made some changes to our original object, or this cube. It did not change its shape, size or materials. In the physics tab, we can see that Blender has enabled the fluid properties, for our original cube object. And also for the domain object that Blender has added here, the fluid properties are enabled. Before we discuss these properties in details, let us first run this simulation and quickly see the smoke effect with the default settings. You can see that the smoke is generated, and it is rising up, and filling the highlighted bounding box, or the smoke domain. You can enlarge this domain object or change its dimensions to get the smoke spread over a large area. But a big size domain will take much longer time to simulate. The domain has to be also quite bigger than our original object. So one good option is to make the smoke object smaller, and to bring down the scale of the entire scene. Otherwise you have to enlarge the domain object sufficiently. For our scene, let us resize our smoke object by 0.5. The characteristics of a smoke simulation is primarily governed by the properties of this domain object. So, let us look at its properties now. In the fluid section of the physics tab, we have this type field selected as domain. There are three possible options here. Domain type, flow type, and the effector. The domain type object defines the area or the volume within which the smoke will spread and exist. No smoke will go outside this domain object. The entire smoke will be confined and will circulate just within this volume. For the smoke object, we can see that it has the flow type selected. So we will call it the flow object. A flow object is the source of a smoke. It is responsible to generate the smoke, and the smoke spreads within the volume of the domain object. So basically the area between the flow object or the source, and the domain, the area between them, will be filled with the smoke. Blender only supports a rectangular domain object. Apart from the domain and the flow objects, we have another type of object, called an effector. Effector is an external factor that creates some force, like a wind, or a turbulence. It affects the smoke and blows it towards another direction, or creates a cyclone effect. But, smoke will be visible only within this domain object, so make it enough big if you also add an effector. Let us now look at the properties of the domain. In the domain type, we have gas, because we are working with smoke. Then we have resolution division. This defines how much details will be visible in the smoke texture. With a lower number of divisions, the smoke will look very ordinary, while a higher value will result in a high quality smoke. But a higher value will also mean higher time to generate the simulation. So, during the design phase, you can use a lower value, like 20. And in your final render, you can go for a higher value, say 64. But please also remember, if you use a higher value, the smoke will look better, but the amount of smoke will be less. A lower number of divisions will result in more visible smoke, but the details will be missing. I have found that a value of 40 to 50 is a good trade-off between these two essential factors in the smoke quality. This time scale is less relevant for us, because it controls the simulation speed, or how fast the smoke develops. This is primarily useful for still renders, where you just need one frame with full of smoke, say frame 100, so you want to quickly reach that state, fast forwarding the actions by increasing the time scale factor here. For a video animation, just use the default value. This CFL number works along with these time step minimum and maximum values, together with this adaptive checkbox. In a smoke simulation, two things are going on. One is your own animation, where objects are moving at a specific frame rate decided by you. 
Along with that, the smoke simulation is also going on at an internal frame rate decided by this CFL value. These time step values determine how many simulation steps Blender will generate internally to achieve the quality of the smoke you need. If you have a fast moving smoke, use a lower CFL number and also increase the maximum time step value. It will result in a more physically accurate smoke with longer simulation time. Otherwise, just go with the default values. Now, border collisions. By default, when a smoke reaches the boundary of the domain box, it disappears. But if you enable the border collision for one or more sides here, for example, if we enable the bottom option, once the smoke hits the bottom surface, it will bounce back and will circulate within this domain volume. For any other sides, it will pass through the boundary walls and will disappear immediately. We should always enable this adaptive domain option. If enabled, Blender will dynamically calculate the domain volume, ignoring those parts of the domain where there is hardly any smoke. It saves the simulation time without any adverse impact on the simulation. Let us start the simulation and see it in effect. The boundary box is changing its size as we proceed through the simulation. As the smoke goes up, Blender is adapting to the increasing volume of the domain. It results in a simulation at a faster speed. Next, we have these three fields. Together, they control the direction of movement and the velocity of the smoke. A positive value in this buoyancy density means the smoke will be lighter than the atmosphere and it will go upward, and a negative value means the smoke will fall down. But buoyancy is not the only factor that affects the smoke. We have this heat also that similarly determines whether the smoke is lighter or heavier than the atmosphere. So, it will be a combined effect of these two fields. To see the effect of this buoyancy density, we have to first make this heat factor as zero, so that it does not affect the smoke. Now enter a negative value to the buoyancy, say minus two, and go to frame number one and start the simulation to see its effect. Let us change the viewing angle slightly, so that we can see the actions better. You can see here that the smoke is falling down instead of going up, and it is resting on the floor. We have also enabled the bottom surface for the border collision. So it gives a nice effect of cold air or heavy gases, or maybe dusty air, that spread on the ground. You can make a laboratory scene with this. Let us now change back these fields to their default values. This will be 1, and this heat field should generally also be 1. This vorticity field creates random turbulence within the smoke. By default the smoke is uniform in all directions. With vorticity, you will see lots of small spins and swirls within the smoke that make it more beautiful. Let us change it to 0.25. If you now go to the first frame and run the simulation again, you will see that the smoke is not only going upward, but some portions are also spreading in random other directions. And the texture of the smoke is also quite improved, like a high-quality smoke. Along with vorticity, another beautiful option is this dissolve option that makes the smoke look very real. If you enable the dissolve option, the smoke will dissipate or disappear slowly. You can expand this section, and you can enter a time value here, after which the smoke will dissipate. Let us enter 20. Blender will continue to generate new smoke, and the old smoke will disappear after the time interval. So go to frame 1 and start the simulation once more. You will now see that the smoke is not filling the entire domain at all. It is disappearing before it can reach the boundaries. This looks much more real, more beautiful, and this also takes away the boundary problems as there is no sudden fallout. Then we have the noise option. Let us select this and expand the section. It gives us an option to add more finer details to the smoke, further increasing its quality. Currently in the noise method, we only have wavelet. You can play with these values to have a different noise settings that will apply on the smoke. Let us go to the first frame and run the simulation again. Soon we discover that no smoke is visible anymore in our scene. This happens at times when, despite all your efforts, the smoke just does not come back and you may feel helpless. But do not worry. In the fluid properties for the domain object, you can see a section for cache with a path to the cache files. Open this location. The smoke simulation data is stored in these folders. Go one level up. This is the cache folder. We have to delete this entire folder structure to clean the smoke data already saved. This solves our problem. 
Now go to the first frame and run the simulation again. Now the smoke will generate without any problem. The smoke is also little better as we have enabled the noise option this time. Finally we have created a fantastic smoke that is lighter than the air surrounding it. Here we have the smoke start and end frame numbers, which by default matches with your scene start and end frames. But you can define a different frame range where the smoke simulation should take place. Usually, you do not have a smoke for the entire scene, so mention the start frame and the end frame numbers when you need the smoke. The other fields are less important, and you can go with the default settings for them. Let us now look at the smoke settings for our flow object, which is this cube. It generates the smoke, and it controls a few properties of the smoke. The flow type is of course smoke. The flow behavior has two options, inflow and outflow. Outflow is used where the smoke will be sucked up instead of generating it. So, the smoke will disappear if we have an outflow type of flow object. It is less relevant here, it is more applicable for liquid fluids, like in a bathtub, where you have an inlet and an outlet. But for smoke, we hardly use an outlet. So it will be always an inflow only. Let us look at sampling sub-steps. The smoke is generated at a frequent interval. If the flow object is moving very fast, like a rocket exhaust, you should increase this value to say 3 or 4, so that there is less amount of gaps in between smoke formations, and the smoke does not look intermittent or disjoint. Now, this smoke color is supposed to define the color of the smoke, but it does not really work in that way. This smoke and the density need additional adjustments in the smoke material, without which it does not come out as we expect. I have created another tutorial on how to get a colorful smoke or a thick smoke. The link is in the video description you may want to check out. Finally, this initial temperatures defines the temperature difference between the smoke and the atmosphere when the smoke is generated. A positive value will make the smoke lighter and it will go up, and a negative temperature difference will make the smoke fall down. But remember that, this temperature difference works in combination with the heat factor, for the smoke domain, which we have defined here. This is little tricky actually. There is a relation between this heat factor of the domain object, and the temperature value of the flow object, here. Let us look at this chart, to understand their relationship better. You can imagine these two values to be multiplied to get the final result. If the multiplication gives us a positive number, then the smoke will go up. And if it is a negative number, the smoke will fall down. So for a normal smoke, you can leave the temperature just as 1. Next we have flow source. This may not be very important, usually we don't change it, but we have an option for particle system here. It can create very accurate and fine smoke. However, this will take much longer time to simulate and may not be suitable for a quick smoke scene. Under Mesh option, if we enable this planar checkbox, the smoke will generate only from the surface area of the flow object, not from its entire volume. It does not make much difference, except that the amount of smoke may change a bit. This initial velocity can be very important at times. For example, if the smoke is coming out of a helicopter which is on fire, we should enable this initial velocity option so that the smoke starts with the same velocity as that of the flow object. And in case of a rocket exhaust, you can manually alter this velocity such that the smoke comes out with force in the opposite direction. This texture field can be used to apply any particular design or pattern to your smoke. So, we have discussed almost all the smoke settings and properties. If you want, you can even hide the flow object in the viewport or in the render. It won't be visible in the scene, only the smoke will be visible. But if you hide the domain, the smoke will disappear. So the domain is basically same as the smoke, the flow object only controls how the smoke is generated. Now, in addition to this cube object, we can have more flow objects also within a domain. And you can use multiple such domain objects, if the flow objects are far apart from each other. Let us add another flow object. Just add any mesh. It is too big for this domain, so scale it down by 0.5. We will also move it up little bit, so that the two flow objects are placed at a distance within the same domain. Now, in order to turn this sphere into a flow object, in the physics tab, enable the fluid option by clicking on this. In the type field, select the flow type. Among the other settings, the flow type will be smoke only. But change the flow behavior to inflow. That's it, we got another source for the smoke. Let us have this cube generate a lighter smoke that will go up. 
and the sphere will generate a cold or heavier smoke. Let us change the initial temperature to minus 1 for the sphere object. It will create a cold smoke that will go down. But remember, this temperature is not the only factor that control the smoke velocity, we have to also go to the domain properties and verify the heat factor here. It should have a positive value. And we need to also change the buoyancy density to zero, so that it does not affect our smoke, only the heat factor affects it. So for the cube flow object, we have set a positive temperature, and for the sphere, we have set a negative value. Now, go to the first frame and start the simulation to see its effect. You can see how the two smokes are behaving differently, one going up and the other falling down. Ultimately they mix up and exchange the heat as per standard physics. They are sharing the same domain, so the smoke quality is also same for both, only the behavior is different. This has been a long tutorial, but I really wanted to cover each factor in details. I want to tell you about two more things which are important. Sometimes, you will find that the smoke is not generating. Whatever you do, whatever you change, it just does not work, it seems. In such a case, you can do few things. First check the temperature settings that you have for the flow object here. And then in the domain object, cross verify the density and the heat factor. These three together define the smoke behavior, which way it will go. Please remember that a high value in the vorticity field can suppress everything else. Now, if it still does not work, sometimes the smoke may not be visible, your recent changes are not taking effect, you can try to delete this cache, as I have described earlier. Just remove this entire folder structure from here or from your system's file manager. It will reset the smoke data. If it still does not work, you can try to change the volume type from OpenVDB to Unicache, and then change it back to OpenVDB again. It may work in some cases. And the third thing that you can try is, go to the Render Properties tab and change the render engine to Cycles once, and again change it back to EV. This is weird I know, but I have seen this solve some problems at times. Another challenge that you may face is, the smoke might look good here, but if you go to the Rendered View mode, you may not find the smoke enough good at all. It is very faint here. In the solid view mode, it was quite dense, but it is very thin like this in the render output. To fix this, we have to change the light. So go to the light tab, and change the light to a sun. Then reduce the strength to something like 3. Now you can see a good smoke which was visible in the solid view mode. It will now render exactly like this. In the next tutorial, we will discuss how to set up a material for this smoke and create a colorful smoke, or a thick black smoke. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.